what's going on today guys it's february so we're going to go over some pre-emergent strategies for uh different types of turf so buckle in get out your pens and paper crayons and such take notes this will be good pretty topical right now it's uh february and uh it's time to start looking into getting your pre-emergence down actually it's almost past time <laughs> you gotta you gotta get rolling um here in the southeast you need to usually we'll start in you know mid early january even sometimes but you just want to be sure that you have your pre-emergence out before soil temperatures reach 55 degrees i I've never been one to go out and stick a barbecue probe in the <laughs> in the dirt and see what the temperature was, but there's websites where you can pull up your average five day running, weekly, whatever, soil temps. Um, I, I usually don't get too much into that. You can, you usually know, <laughs> but uh, you know, this, this time of year, you know, if you got a lot of them to do, you need to start early and the weather's not gonna cooperate with you. You can get rained out, snowed out, whatever, a lot of days. So you wanna be sure that you've got them all out before your soil temperature reaches 55 degrees. There's no real penalty for going out early, especially with things like prodiamine. Uh, they, they break down mainly by soil uh, microbial activity. And when it's cold outside, there ain't much soil microbial activity. So your pre-emergence not breaking down. The other way it can break down is through photo degradation. And if it gets on the leaf or whatever, when you spray it, if you don't get it watered in, sun beats down on it, it could degrade your pre-emergent. But I ain't seen the sun in a while, so that ain't an issue. And it's not gone long enough to sit without getting rained on. So they're getting watered in. So you get them watered in, they're in the ground, it's cold they're gonna stay there. You're not gonna lose any time of coverage due to that. <clears throat> With something like prodiamine, um, a lot, the popular way to do it and what I usually try to do is doing a split app. And what that means is for me, my goal for a seasonal application, meaning this is gonna be the spring application. So my spring application, I would want to be about one pound per acre of prodiamine. So what that could look like is you could go out in January, February-ish with a half pound, three quarters pound, whatever, and then come back in two to three months and add that that extra to round it up to your, your pound per seasonal application. Like for example, if you put out a half a pound in January, February, come back in April, May, you know, lay down the other half a pound. If you put down three quarters of a pound in January, February, come back later with a quarter pound. And what that'll do is that'll ensure you've stretched out that duration to get you through crabgrass germination. The major drawback to pre-emergence like prodiamine, dithiapyr, pendimethalin is one, they can prune roots and that's uh, the idea behind that new product from subvert the the uh prefix um but two extended use time after time after time after time they tend to stop working uh pendimethalin especially i've seen is not as effective as it once was uh, a lot of poa and stuff's getting around for diamine so overuse can uh drop your your efficacy for sure so you know, kind of what what I do in most cases is I usually do not put out a fall pre-emergent. I usually choose to deal with those weeds post-emergently. Uh, if I've had major problems at a place, I'll go ahead and put it out. But I, I, I kind of avoid that one and give it a little break for a while. Um, also, what you could do, you know, is you could give the yard a year off from a pre-emergent and just deal with your weeds post-emergently. Um, None of these ideas are bad ideas. Uh, a lot of times what has happened is just the overuse or 
uh, in some in a lot of herbicides, a uh, under uh, under label rate application. Uh, not so much pre-emergence, but this is we're just talking herbicide resistance here. Like you give it a low rate application, and the plant just kind of suffers and then bounces back. It's now learned to deal with that herbicide. You're gonna have a heck of a time killing it, and the next generations to come from those plants are gonna be even be more herbicide resistant. So you know. I get those label rates out. I, I use full label rate on everything. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. We were talking about pre-emergence. Let me get back to that. When we were talking about herbicide resistance. These things, they got two different names on them. This one's pendulum. It's pendimethylin, a different active ingredient. And this is prodiamine. And this is generic prodiamine. But you might see something called barricade or stonewall or uh, and things like that. But... They got a different active ingredient, a different name brand. So you can switch between those and uh, lessen your chance for herbicide resistance, right? Uh-uh. Uh, Dithiapyr, pendimethylin, prodiamine, same mode of action. So in terms of trying to work out herbicide resistance and rotating between products like this, ain't gonna do you no good. This one right here, we found over, I have found over the years is becoming less and less and less and less effective. Uh, this is what I usually go out with, and it's per die. I mean, you can get about five acres, depending on your rate, out of that jug. If you're going full pound rate, it's five pound jug, so I say five acres. You get a half pound rate. You get 10 acres. But you won't, it won't last as long. See, that's the thing. With, I'm sorry, I'm shaking around so much. That's the thing with per die. I mean, um, putting out the lower rate, doesn't make it any less effective. It just affects how long it's gonna last for you. So there's prodiamine and uh, pendimethylin. Uh, Dithiapyr, same thing. Dithiapyr has a little bit of post-emergent action. Uh, if you get it, if I would use Dithiapyr if I was coming, uh, you know, dimension. If I had a customer that I got late or whatever and I didn't get a pre-emergent out and I knew they were gonna have crabgrass or they were already getting some really small tiller crabgrass, uh, if you get out with the full rate of uh, dimension, you can have some activity on that smaller tiller crabgrass, maybe even kill it. But uh, that, that's where I would use that. I would, I would, if I had my choices and you know, perfect time and perfect conditions, I would go with prodiamine every time over dithiapyr. Prodiamine, I believe, lasts a little longer too, or at least that's my experience with it. All right, prodiamine, dithiapyr, pendimethylin, all the same basic mode of action. So that, that's those. We were talking that uh, spring pre-emergent and the main thing you're gonna be preventing is, with that application is crabgrass. You just want to beat that crabgrass germination. To me, that's the most important one. And then, you know, things like goosegrass and, and uh, even Dallas grass, you can you can slow down with the pre-emergent. <coughs> um, the prodiamine, uh, dithiapyr, all that, eh, not so great uh, on goosegrass, in my opinion. Uh, it, the the best action with prodiamine you'll get on goosegrass is if you put in a split the app three times and come in really late in the summer with a third application and then you're you're pressing up over recommended label rates and all that stuff but uh, you you can help yourself with goosegrass some like that uh, another the what i'm doing on bermuda grass this uh well, I'm calling it spring, but it's February right now, is uh, we're getting out with uh, Shoreguard, uh, Fleamy Oxygen, and I feel like that that's gonna be a little more successful to help me stop things like goosegrass, and it'll prevent crabgrass and all that. Um, I do feel like though, with these early Shoreguard applications, it's not a bad idea to come back later in the spring, early in the summer, with about a half a pound of prodiamine. All right, so that, that's how I'm gonna run Shoreguard. I've got some uh, Shoreguard results right here. The audio's bad, so I'm just gonna try to talk over them. But I'm gonna put up some, I got some like 10 day results and some stuff in a plant bed that I 
double passed on with the permagreen, so I got a really heavy dose on it. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but I, it's a plant bed. It's a bare dirt, but, and then the yard next door to the lab here that I showed in the snow for my one ring week results. All right, well, let's, let's show those. Let's roll that beautiful Flumi oxygen footage. Flumi oxygen. This property had about 10 days on it since I applied the uh, Sure Guard and about 24 ounces of glyphosate. Uh, you can see some of the chickweed and stuff just kind of getting laid out a little bit, starting to take effects. This, this stayed under snow for about four days too after the application. And it's been brutally cold, overcast, raining. Um, I can see some of the POA in it is checked out completely. This is the plant bed. It's just a bare dirt bed that was cleared out. That's POA. I double passed this with the permagreen, so it got a double, double dual bad application. It laid out a lot of POA, and there's a little broadleaf stuff in there. I, I guess it's chickweed from looking at it on this video, but it, it's definitely all taking a major beating in this bed. Hopefully this will keep it cleaned out for a while too. And I don't I don't think it's done killing either. It's it's wiping stuff out. Then this is uh, another property. It had a lot of uh, hen bit in it. The hen bit has disappeared. I don't know what happened. This grassy weed here, I, that, I'm not sure what that is. It might even be, I'm not sure, but it's definitely starting to take effects on that. And again, this was under snow for about four days. It's about two weeks on this application. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this is the front yard at that same property. This is the one that I showed under snow in the one week application results video. So I, I think it's still, still working on it because I can see some stuff really getting tortured. But this time of year, things, things roll slow. All right, like what I'll see in from the Shore Guard app in dormant Bermuda grass, I think that's pretty much my go-to strategy for Bermuda and for uh, fescue and uh, zoysia, other things. I'm I'm gonna just go with trying to get that full pound of prodiamine on it uh, before crabgrass germinates. So I'm, I'm splitting that out on the prodiamine. But yeah, you know, you'll see videos of me doing different things. But anyway, all right. And I hear a lot, and I get asked a lot about uh, uh, tenacity as a pre-emergent. Uh, tenacity will is a fall. I mean, as a spring pre-emergent to get you through crabgrass season and all. It's, it's not your it's not your dog, man. That's not what you need. Um, tenacity has its use. Uh, I use it uh, sometimes in seeding fescue when I'm worried that I'm going to have some competition trying to come up in the meantime because it it won't hurt that fescue seed, but it'll it'll hold back some of that other seed for a short period of time. And tenacity is only really worthwhile, in my opinion, if you're going to use it in like a three-stage application. And don't hold me to the wall on these quotes. I'm going off the top of my head, but on these rates. But I think what I generally do is I'll come out with about four ounces per acre of tenacity, follow that up in about three weeks with three ounces, follow that one up in a, another couple of few weeks with two ounces of tenacity. And that usually gets you pretty clean. <coughs> but as far as pre-emergent capability, it's pretty short lived and it's definitely not gonna be for this uh, spring crabgrass preventative uh, type of application. So I, I don't I don't really like tenacity in that case, but it definitely has its places in its uses. In centipede grass, I'm a little afraid to get a full one pound of uh, prodiamine on it. So what I'll either do in that, well, I'm, I'm experimenting with the uh, uh, subvert uh, root pruner preventer product, this is the uh, prefix. Um, maybe that will help, but I really would not exceed half a pound of prodiamine per season and use something like simazine or atrazine, uh, to help you with that. And atrazine is 
So they say not as effective anymore. I still get, I still get some pretty fair results with some atrazine, I'm telling you. But I mean, atrazine is not for everyone and it's a restricted use product. Um, so we worry more about root pruning in centipede than probably any other turf because it roots so shallow. But root pruning is a serious issue caused by pre-emergence in any kind of turf and over application of pre-emergence will really mess up your turf. I've, I've seen centipede where guys, uh, it used to be a habit here for some of the spray companies, spray companies <coughs> to put a little prodiamine or, or, or a pen to methylene in with every single application. And uh, that, boy, it, it wrecked the centipede in this area. Um, you could go by and pick it up. It just blew up when it got hot. I mean, it was not pretty, but that, you know, don't, don't do that. So centipede, try to limit your amount of prodiamine down to about a half a pound. Maybe use atrazine, cinnazine, uh, and try out the subvert uh, root pruner preventer uh, prefix. Anyway, that's that's my centipede thoughts. Okay, so quick summary to wrap up here. Um, in Bermuda grass, dormant Bermuda grass this time of year, I like the route of applying the uh, Sure Guard with maybe some methyl furon or uh, glyphosate or glufosinate. I did a video on applying SureGuard and uh, check that out. And I, I like I like that route for dormant Bermuda grass this time of year. For most everything else, we're gonna go for diamine. Uh, split those rates. Uh, be careful of over application, especially on centipede grass if you have centipede grass. Uh, and you do want you want to get out early, and you want to beat the germination of the crabgrass, which would really mean you want it out and watered in and, and in there doing its deal before soil temperatures reach 55 degrees. So what that generally means in my area is start getting them out in January, February, uh, probably through March, you're, you're probably safe. Um, but there, like I said, there's apps to watch that soil temperature. And once it gets over that, it might be too late. Um, I like to run a little post-emergent when I'm putting out pre-emergent most of the time. Because uh, if you're going to be spraying, you might as well be killing weeds too. But uh, there's my little little pre-emergent summary. Uh, you know, you want to watch for things, uh, herbicide resistance, for example. Uh, maybe giving the turf off a year from pre-emergence if that fits into... You know, if that works for you, that might be a really good idea and your, your turf would, would, would thank you for it. Um, again, things like perdiamine, pendimethylin, dithiapyr, all the same mode of action. So alternating between those is not helping you with herbicide resistance. Um, so, you know, they, there's just not that many modes of action available in turf products right now. Uh, maybe somewhere down the road, there'll be interest and a call for it but right right now you ain't got it uh man that's pretty much it so just get those things out have that nice weed free weed free yard that you're wanting right yeah i don't know anyway i appreciate you guys watching we'll check you out next time